Let us change our interpreter to handle division by zeros. Divisions by zero. So how do we do this? We're going to do option one. So there are two options. One is you can just let the whole thing crash and then catch the exception and just trigger an, an error. But that is a bit heavy handed and I would have to introduce uh, exceptions, which I don't want to do today. So instead, let's try to change how we implement division and let's write some code that represents an error code instead of raising an error like Racket does by default. So we will need a safe division and I already pasted that code here, safe division, which checks if the denominator is zero, if it is zero, return false. So we have a false again to signify an erroneous behavior. And then what I did was I updated eval built in to return my safe division rather than um, rather than the default records division. So now let's re rerun exercise two and see what happens. If we run this, we get false, which is what we want. We want now our um, expression to return false. Oh, there's one thing I changed that I forgot. Actually, let me revert this back to how it was. So before it was like this, right? If we run this the first time and you just change it, we would get um, a contract error because now I'm returning false. So I kind of need to revisit my contract. Now the implementation is doing what I want it to do, which is to return false when there's an error. But instead, my contract says that it should always return a number, and that is not the case. So how do we do this? We use the or operator for contracts, and we say we can return a number or false. And if we do that, now we can rerun our example, which is this, and now we see that it returns false, as and nothing is wrong with that. So that's an accepted value as well. It could be either a number or a false, and that, that, is, that is working as expected. So now let's try an ex exercise three. And in exercise three, what I have here, I'm nesting one divided by zero inside a plus to see if this still works. And if I run it, what you will see is as follows. What we see is plus got broken. So now I have another internal error, one that shouldn't be leaking out to the client. So what is the problem here? Well, if you remember our first lessons, the first couple of lessons, you will remember that evaluation happens from left to right, which means if you do division by zero, currently what that happens is we replace it by false because there was an error. And now what we get is plus false two and plus false two raises that error. Let's see. If I run it, I get a contract violation where, where it's saying the first argument is expecting a number, but I gave it false, which is true. That's what I did. So we need to change how we implemented our implementation. Why? Because either argument, because we are running recursively, could potentially raise if you will, a division by zero. So what that means is that now we have to handle false, right? False means error, doesn't mean a Boolean. So let's just, what can we do to refactor code? We have to change it slightly. So what we can do first is, um, let me just refactor this. This is the recursive evaluation of the first argument. So let's call it arg1 define arg1 to be all this, right? And now what we do is now we have a conditional, right? And if arg1 is a false, that means we got an error. What do we do? We return arg1. In case of error propagated, right? Otherwise, else, 
we want to evaluate the whole thing, right? But now the second argument could also potentially be subject to a division by zero. So we need to do the same pattern yet again. So we do define argument two, and we have the argument two here, and now we need to check again. So is, is arc two false? If that's the case, I return arc two, I return false. Propagate it. Otherwise, let me just move this to the line below so that we have else. Okay. Otherwise, we have everything in order and we can finally execute this. Now we close that branch and we close this other conditional and finally we close that branch. Okay, so now we are handling the case where the first argument gets a division by zero and then in this else branch we handle the case where the second argument is gets a division by zero error and otherwise if there is no division by error in by zero in either argument we are ready to evaluate our exception expression so let's see if this works yay so now we got false which means the whole thing was a failure and everything worked as expected so this is the error we were talking about that we just handled and the solution is in the slides as well so next let's try to refactor this code we saw some repetition there let's try to refactor clean this code up and try to build a library that handles errors for us uh, instead of doing that pattern over and over.